EA Sports coverage of the National Football League takes us to the banks of the Ohio River and Paycor Stadium in the Queen City of Cincinnati. Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. And before kickoff, Charles, quickly, your keys to the game. Well, partner, I can give you the standard ones, turnovers, special teams play. But here's one that doesn't get talked about much anymore, and that's time of possession. Whoever controls the football, gives their defense a break, and takes care of business, that's the team that's going to win this ball game. set to go Evan McPherson to do the honors and we are underway from Cincinnati and they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30 the Colts heading out for the first time behind their 22 year old quarterback in his second season now in the NFL Anthony Richardson and we're talking about an uber talented young quarterback Finally healthy after suffering a setback a season ago. Obviously, you'd love to have him on the field, but the time away may have been a blessing in disguise in terms of long-term development. And if you ask anyone around the Indianapolis camp, make no mistake about it. They have locked the expectations of this young man, and he is a big, big player in the Colts' future. Richardson going right to the air. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 25 yards there on the catch and run. And Michael Pittman had another strong campaign in Indianapolis last season. They saw him set career highs in receptions with 109 and over 1,100 yards. He's extremely valuable to this offense, and they really want to pair him with their young quarterback, Anthony Richardson. And management recognized that by giving him a new contract. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Second and six. Now Richardson, he's going to keep it running right. Four yards there on the keeper, but still going to bring up a third down. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. On fourth down, the Colts will call on Rigoberto Sanchez for the punt. Charlie Jones deep for Cincinnati. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin corner. And they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. Now the Bengals make their way out on offense for the first time, led by their fifth-year quarterback out of LSU, Joe Burrow. So this is what we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball. Run it inside. Everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space. Now Burrow down around his goal line. Out to his left. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid game to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. Now second and three. Now they go play action now. Burrow. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And he gets this one just shy of the 35 to the 34. 
22 yards there, a first down. And that play came together really well for them as he found open space, makes the catch, and gets down to the one-yard line. You know he's kicking himself right now. He thought he had a chance to get a touchdown and put that in his ledger. Instead, his team gets a chance to cash in over these next few plays. Burrow looking to pass. Throw left side complete. That's Brown. And that's good for a gain of six. And that's going to bring up second down. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that? yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where the play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, that and he'll be brought down by the Colts. Quiddy Pay getting in there and burying him behind the line. They've gobbled up over 30 yards of turf so far, but a sack knocks them backwards. And that interrupts the momentum they were building. Good opportunity for the defense to escape this drive before they get to the end zone. So that'll leave Burrow and the Bengals with a third and long after that sack we just saw. He'll look to throw. That is caught. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered, but how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. From midfield now, Burrow. Incomplete. It certainly looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. Second and ten. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. Hits his target, that's Charlie Jones. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 34-yard line. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Now it's Burrow. That's caught by his big tight end, Mike Kosicki. And he will reach the eight-yard line before going out. A big play that time on the catch and run. And it'll give him a fresh set of downs. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Now it's Burrow. Over the middle, he finds Higgins. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. And Burrow going to throw again. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Jamar Chase on a touchdown throw from Joe Burrow. And the Bengals go coast to coast and finish the drive off with six points. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. 
So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was Jamar Chase who finished it off with a touchdown reception. To the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Taylor to begin the drive and forget about finding a lane he barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield score that tackle for loss to the Wyoming alumnus Logan Wilson plays like we just saw there that's why they're up right now the defense they're doing their job yeah it starts with the guys up front so when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team a lot of them say we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. Call it a gain of five that time. They'll be left with a third down and about nine to go. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Here's third and nine. play action. Now Richardson rolling to his right. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. And we got a pause following the play because it appears a member of the Bengals in some discomfort. The medical staff will attend to him and we will step aside. First and 10, Taylor now. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. 10 more there and another first down. A vintage run there because when the chains move with him, they move quickly. No secret that Taylor's one of the most electric playmakers in the league whenever he's on the field. Always a threat to go the distance. Richardson. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. And now a stoppage. It looks like we have a Colt who was shaken up on that last play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. on this drive so far. It's first and ten. Now Flacco. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Now a second and ten. Setting up to throw, Flacco. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. 
That play call wasn't there for them against that coverage. So they're going to spin the dial now in their playbook and come up with one more shot at the marker to try and keep this series going. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Now it's Flacco. He'll get this one to Pittman. And they've got it inside the ten at the eight. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A very important third down conversion right there because when you're trailing and find yourself this deep in enemy territory, the kicker's not even part of your thought process. You got to make it pay off with six. Nice connection right there to set up first and goal. They'll run here with Taylor. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. That's good power football on first and goal. A lot of teams will throw from there. But that's a nice job to chew up a few more yards and get yourself closer to the goal line. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Colts in possession. As they come up now, second and goal. Passing play, Flacco. Touchdown, Colts! Alec Pierce, a five-yard touchdown. And the Colts are an extra point away from drawing level. Well, that's just how they drew it up, C.D. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Matt Gay on for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. A 10-play drive that time, and it was capped off by a touchdown catch from Alec Pierce. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Here's the first carry of the game for Zach Moss. And he powers his way up past the 30. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Now Burrow. This pass complete to Higgins. And Higgins is going to have a Bengals first down as he'll get this up to the 39. That'll go as a pickup of eight. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. And that one complete once again to Higgins. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. The catch and run going to wind up netting him 33 yards. 
And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. And they'll send the tight end in motion. Burrow will throw. That would almost intercept it, but it's incomplete. Not a good throw there, and it'll be second down. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Throwing again, it's Burrow. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Well, it looked like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. And that will be incomplete. The Colts D sticking to their assignments, and that brings up fourth. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. So on fourth down, off goes Burrow. On comes Evan McPherson for the Bengal field goal. McPherson's kick is good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And he's got Pierce. And he's knocked to the turf right there at the 46-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. What an intelligent play as he found open grass and uncovered quickly. A nice clutch play to move the chains. The defense, they've got to do a much better job of accounting for these shorter routes. That is caught. Michael Pittman with it. And he's got this down to the 35. 18 more yards there and another first down. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. They'll send a receiver in motion to the right. Now here's a fake on the jet sweep and instead a give to Taylor. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Now Richardson. That one finds Pierce right side. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And now we've got a third and four. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. The Colts on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and four. Richardson working from the gun. 
Quick slant caught by Pierce. And he is going to have a Colts first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. Third and four is always a tough call. Maybe a little too long to run for it, but not too long to hit him on the quick slant. And that was well executed. Found the window and zipped it right in there. Richardson off the play fake. A short throw. This is caught by Cox. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. The passing game for the Colts finding its stride. Another first down. What a drive. This has been just chewing up the yardage. And here's one of their best plays yet as they finally get down into the red zone and look to finish this off with six. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Richardson looking to throw. This will be caught at about the five. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. They give him two yards there as they're set up now with a first and goal. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Taylor. Going to be hit and met at the line of scrimmage. They get him down at the three. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, your front five, whatever. And this time he is in. Yes. Jonathan Taylor, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Colts have taken the lead. Well, they move the ball down the field through the air, Charles, and then finally they get the running game involved, and it works to perfection. Touchdown. And, partner, I kept waiting for that running game to come into play, and they actually saved it until the very end. Touchdown goes on his stat sheet, but you and I both know, and he knows as well, his teammates airing it out made this a successful drive. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. And that makes it 14-10. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Cincinnati set to take over once again. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Here's Burrow staying on his feet. And yeah, that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. Here's second and ten. Burrow looking to pass. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. 
And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. They'll come up now third and nine. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. The Bengals bring out their punter now. The deep to return is Josh Downs. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and ten. Here comes Jonathan Taylor and his teammates. He's hoping to get it going. They're hoping to get him going, too. You know he's about ready to pop one here in the second quarter. He's hoping. And his offensive line teammates, they want to get one of those, too, because they want to continue to run the football. Most offensive linemen like that part of the game better than pass protection because they're not taking blows. They're right. actually dealing them out. So what they want to do is show the coaches, hey, if we pop one, we're having success. That way they won't go away from the running game. They'll be open to pop one, break one here this go around. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. That's a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal gain. Ball on the 35. Here comes second and five. Here's Richardson to throw. Hits his target to tight end, Mo Alley Cox. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets him a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. From the shotgun, Richardson. He's got his man. It's Pierce. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Here Richardson yet again. Throw over the middle, going to be caught here by Mo Alley Cox. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. They'll get 13 yards for the second play in a row. Oh, that's a nice job of clearing space in the middle of the field for your tight end. He's going to start behind the line and run an angle route, hoping to kind of get lost in the middle of the field. And this is put right on him, and he's able to pick up a first down. This one finds Pierce on the out route. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with 23 seconds to go till halftime. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Richardson looking to throw this. Delivers another one to Pierce. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. Consecutive catches for him. That good for 11. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. Gay's kick is good. So three points on the board, as easy a field goal as you're going to get, but I can see you shaking your head. I love that peripheral vision of yours, partner, because to me, if it's the fourth quarter and you're up six, I get it. But now, even if you run and don't get in, you're still setting them up to go a long field, 98, 99-yard drive. How do you look at your defense and not give them that opportunity? Bring a 
So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And they'll have time for one play. There's two seconds on the clock. And he floated one out there incomplete. So we come to halftime here with the visiting Colts taking the lead to the locker room. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. One touchdown is the difference. 17-10 our score, and we are back underway on EA Sports. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. And they're still very much in this game, although they do trail. What's the game plan, Charles, for the second half? It might be a little counterintuitive because most people will think losing equals passing the ball more, but I'd establish the running game. They kind of went away from it in the first half. I think if they get back in balance, it'll help them when they put the ball back in the air. A run by Moss to start the third quarter. And he powers his way up past the 30. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. Be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. Now it's Burrow. Now a short one to Gesicki. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Now it's Burrow. Over the middle, he finds Higgins. And he'll be down at the 46. Well, they go from 146 to the other on a pickup of eight. Second and a couple. And Chase will go in motion left. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Two yards still to go. Third down now. They'll drop to throw. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. And he'll take it across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. Tough one there. First drive of the third quarter, throw an interception, and now a chance that they could be in even a bigger hole if they can convert this into points. Yeah, but how good do you feel if you're that defensive coordinator right now? Because you just know that the head coach looked at him and said, turn him loose, big man, and he'd be able to take a few extra chances playing with this type of a lead, and boy, it paid off. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. And their defense just helped them out by getting the football back on the opening drive here in the second half. And now can the offense follow through with points on their first possession? And that's a big one for them because after the work the defense has done, they've got a chance here to open up this lead. Oh. 
To the right side, this is Taylor. A solid stiff arm. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 47 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second and five. Richardson out of the shotgun. Over the middle, hauled in by Pierce. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. And he is going to have a Colts first down. At least it appears that way. And he got it by maybe the length of a football. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence. And you're right, they need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. Richardson. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. And coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Running straight ahead, Taylor. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. They'll say no gain on the play, so it was looking good, but nothing there. And now it's third down and inches. Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. Yeah, Richardson back to throw it. And he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. Josh Downs from three yards out and the Colts go up by two touchdowns partner they had a good lead as they went in at the half and they came out here in the second half and found a way to extend it I love their consistency don't worry about what they said at halftime this seemed like a team that was ready to play 60 minutes and while this game is far from over I love their approach Gay is on for the point after. And the lead is up to 14. So that drives seven plays in length. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. Now Burrow. Throw left side complete to Chase. 
It'll go down as a gain of six, and that will bring up second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. one across the 45 before he's brought down. And that one will go for 13 yards on the keeper and a first down. Now that run, that's exactly why you stay with the running game. You don't abandon it totally. You stick with it, keep telling your guys to stay motivated, and they found a crease on that play. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. Over the middle complete, that's Higgins. They'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Here's a second and eight. Burrow will throw. Over the middle, he's got Gesicki, the big 6-5 tight end. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team, but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want him to catch the football first. Oh, and this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Throwing again, it's Burrow. This complete to Jones. And he'll take this into the end zone for Bengal TD. Charlie Jones, 44 yards. And the Bengals are back within a score. Great corner out there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field and you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. McPherson on for the point after. He's got it, and it's 24-17. So the drive there took six plays, and it ends with a Bengals score. To the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. By Anthony Richardson and the offense back out. And he had the touchdown of the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverages last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 63 yards rushing for him in the ball game now on 14 carries. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off, but you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. In my book, that's running the ball well, but 
but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game, and with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 34-yard line. 23 yards on the tuck and run. I am willing to bet that he got a monster grin on his face when he saw what was happening. Man Cubs were so committed to denying a big throw that it pulled attention away from him, and he had an easy lane to hit, and hit it he did. So they'll come up in Bengals' territory now with a first and 10 at the 34. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. It'll be a pickup of four, and it winds us down to the end of the third quarter. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. It's the Colts. They've got control of the football. They also have the lead as we start the fourth. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. And they'll go to the air now with Richardson. He's got the tight end, Mo Ali cox And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 19 yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. It's all pretty simple sometimes, isn't it? Go where the defenders are not, and he does exactly that. Makes a nice catch to move the chains. Defense, got to find a better way of accounting for the shorter routes that are being run against them. And he takes it in for a cold score. Jonathan Taylor. His second touchdown of the night. And the Colts have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. And the thing you have to love about Jonathan Taylor, he's a shifty speed guy most of the time when you hand him the football. But he's not coming off the field when you get down near the goal line because he's as tough and gritty as they come. And he finishes things off here by getting into the end zone. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Bengals offense and Joe Burrow getting set for this next drive. And we'll take you through some of the highlights here. You'll notice he had a hand in a lot of them so far. He's got this offense rolling right now. The Bengals drive about to get going. For this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air, so now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. Okay, if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. For the way the game's being played now, 
This is just part of what they do, so I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant. Keep throwing it around. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. Open man is Chase complete. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 10 yards there on a Bengal first. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. In motion right is Jones. They'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. This drive starts with two steps forward and now one back. A pair of first downs, and here, a loss of yardage. It's not easy playing the corner, is it? A lot of times you got to defend against the pass, but sometimes you have to play against the run. How about a job he did there, crashing inside to make that tackle for a loss? And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. When you're leading in the final quarter, your radar has to be up for any potential deep shots. And probably not the last one they're going to see in this game, not as long as they hold this lead. The offense on third down tonight, they've only converted once in four tries. This is going to be third and 13. Here's Burrow. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Partner, what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. Here we go. It's Burrow on fourth down. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And it's knocked away and incomplete. The Bengals try it, but it doesn't work out. And the Colts are going to take over with a football. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur so they can't let that dream go just yet they have to get stout on defense here yeah right now really hoping for a turnover the indie offense at the line and set to go a real chance for them to salt this game away after that turnover on downs holding a two score lead in the fourth quarter and he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Second down, another run with Taylor. And that is not going to get it done either. Once again, he's stopped behind the line by this Bengals D. He lost two there, and it's third down. Now, that's a nice play. <laughs> Got me fired up, partner. But can they do it back-to-back -back plays? All the training that you go through as a defense for these situations, when you have to get the ball back, everything you go through, holding up the runner, raking up the football, getting to the passer, knocking it out of his hands, Whatever way, they have to get the ball back. Now can they stand tall again for a huge fourth quarter stop? A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. And this is seemingly how it's been all game long. This defense has been just a step too slow. And here they're burned again. Another big play. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Back to throw. Here's Richardson. Quick slant caught by Pierce. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Richardson working from the gun. The quick slant caught. 
touchdown. Josh Downs. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Colts have put this one to bed here in the fourth quarter. He's got them out now to a three-score lead here in the fourth quarter after that one, C.D. And, well, he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way, and he secured it for six points. Yeah, and I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, it actually loosens you up and allows you to take maybe a few more chances and definitely play with more confidence because he certainly saw something he could exploit in the defense, and he made sure to let his quarterback know, just get it to me. And the rest was all up to him, and he delivered and made it a three-score game. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. The Bengals offense and their quarterback set to take the field once more. And he has been masterful so far in leading this offense. He's kept the mistakes to a minimum. He's been on point with his passes. And he's generally been one step ahead of this defense all game long. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. In motion comes the tight end left. Burrow looking to pass. Now a short one to Gesicki. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Defensively, they're okay with that. Short little route, tackle them inbounds. Okay. All right, cliche alert. It's time for someone to make a play because they've got to have something bigger downfield. They can't just take what they give them. They've got to force it and make something big happen for them. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Quiddy Pay able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. We all know he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, but definitely not today. His team trailing by multiple touchdowns and a late sack, just a parting gift from the defense for him to take back to the locker room with him. Fourth down, here's Joe Burrow. Oh, that's into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off by Zaire Franklin. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. Well, I guess an interception at this point on fourth down is just as bad as an incomplete pass. Either way, the ball goes over to the other side. Yeah, it's a tough spot to be in this late in the game, and there's not a whole lot he could do there. And he winds up giving the ball away. Colts football and Michael Pittman helmet back on and ready to go. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. So from the 36 now, first and 10. The drive will start with an option going left. And trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. Across the line and to the ball quickly there, Trey Hendrickson. Well, he's had success running the football in this one. and yeah, That's undeniable, but that time the defense was on to it. And partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker 
and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. And he is not going to go anywhere. They're going to get to him behind the line, and that is going to get us to the two-minute warning. One yard is the loss. They back up even further to a third and 15. They run once more with Taylor. And he'll get inside the 40 to maybe the 38-yard line. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. Our praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. And this one is no good. He missed it. And the lead will hold at three touchdowns. Well, they can probably live with that with this late lead in the fourth quarter. That's one of the few things that's gone wrong. You're exactly right. This one was well in hand. That kick there was more for cosmetics, you know, to add to their score. Not getting it, that shouldn't harm them at all. The home team's offense and their quarterback ready to go once more. And it's been a rough night at the office for him. He's been more of a liability than an asset throughout the contest. And this offense is having a hard time overcoming his struggles to this point. The Bengals drive about to get going. Well, probably not much that they can do at this point, CD. Down three scores late in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a little too much to overcome, you would think. Yeah, they'll go down swinging, but in the end, I think we saw the writing on the wall a while back because one team was clearly better than the other in this one. And while it didn't quite reach blowout status, I think we knew who was going to win this one well before we got to this stage. Second down and four. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Flushed out right. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with a minute six left to go in the game. They go play action now. Burrow. And that is incomplete. Even with such a big lead late, the effort hasn't lapsed one bit. If the offense wants to score some points in this one, they're going to have to earn it. These guys are not giving up anything. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. He'll look to throw. He'll look to Gesicki on the out route. Ball is caught. And yeah, he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Now it's Burrow. He's going to have the hook up here to chase. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last complete. Touchdown, Bengals! Gesicki, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Bengals have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team, but I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film, but 
This one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one. McPherson now for the extra point. And the lead will be cut down to 14. That time, a six-play drive. And it all concluded with a touchdown pass to the tight end, Mike Gesicki. So time definitely not in their favor. Down two scores, but they'll try the onside kick. And the Colts are going to recover the football. And that should be enough to get them home. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. The Colts offense and running back Jonathan Taylor heading back onto the field. And it's hard to believe you could run the ball a whole lot better than he has. The vision, the cutback ability, the acceleration, it's all been on display throughout. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. Down to an egos Richardson, and that should finish off this victory. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. <laughs> Well, this was a very close ball game at halftime, Charles, but in the second half, that offense kind of kicked things into another gear, and they were able to pull away for the victory. And yeah, Brandon, I think they're the type of team that just looked in the mirror and said, hey, ton of pressure on, but we're the type of team that can flat out handle it. They stood up, stood up with confidence, and made it happen for a victory. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Cincinnati, good night, everybody.